You know, my friends, it is a sad fact of modern life that no one has the attention spans that they used to anymore. With everybody so busy TikToking their time away, it just seems like we aren't able to grasp anyone for longer than a few seconds before they're already wandering off searching for the next thing to distract their eyes. And that's such a, a difficult position to put us in as a zoological facility, you see, friends, because we need these people to stop wandering around, to hold their attention for longer than 60 seconds so that we'll be able to tell them about the wonders of the natural world and, most importantly, the role that all of them can play in actually making this world a better place, like cleaning up with all that litter that they are hauling around. So, after a lot of deliberation, a whole bunch of experiments, and quite a bit of a... Uh, mm, well, uh, let's say we've had to hire a bazillion different groomers for all of our animals. We have decided to go ahead and try a new tactic to keep people's attention on all of our wonderful zoo animals and to hopefully convince them to take their part in making this world a better place. And so my friends, without further ado, it's time to reveal the new plan, plan Fluffitude! We are no longer going to be content with just having normal clouded leopards. Oh, no, 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 my friends. We're going to have the most fluffy clouded leopards ever. If people are not going to be paying attention to the wonders of life as it is, then we're just going to have to go where their attention is. And the novel, and the weird, and the exceptionally adorable, extremely fluffy animals that we have found ourselves uh, admiring. And look at the little paws. Look at how... Oh, one could argue that it is very tragic and very sad that people are so jaded and they just don't have enough time to appreciate the world as it is anymore. Distracted, easily caught up in all sorts of fancy CGI, CG what's, that it, it's kind of sad that people perhaps cannot just appreciate the beautiful clouded leopard for what it is. But the fact of the matter is that all of our consumer reports, polls, and uh, social media streams seem to result in having more viewer retention if we go ahead and we make the animals extremely fluffy. So and we've got our fluffy clouded leopards and it took quite a while, you don't even want to know of the efforts that we really had to put in to manage this, but we even have our fluffy little hippos. Look at them. What is cuter than a baby hippo? Well, those of us normally here in the pixel biology community would say the baby hippo's cute enough on their own. But, you know, if you need to go ahead and catch people's attention, why not go ahead and make the baby hippo super fluffy? He kind of looks like he was stung by bees. But apparently that's the way that, you know, people people want things to look. Maybe it will end up selling more of our eco-friendly plushies that we try to put out at the gift shop. Ah, uh, yep. Extra fluffy hippos, that is now a thing we are absolutely doing. And if you thought that the uh, sun bear cub that we have is cute, just wait until you see what happens when you make them extremely fluffy. Oh my gosh. Wait, do it again, do it again. I want to see that, li like the lips. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at our sun bears. Yeah, if you thought the sun bears were cute before, just wait, just wait, because now the sun bears are extra fluffy. They've got those big old paws. For just a second there, we saw the gigantic tongue. Oh, oh my goodness. But see, that's still not enough. Not enough to be able to get people to stop, to listen, to wonder, to feel the awe of the natural world. And so we have to keep upping the ante, friends. Mm -hmm. Like, why would we go ahead and have a normal Indian, <laughs> Indian elephant when we could have an extremely fluffy Indian elephant? The poor fellow. Look at him. Look at his tusks. Look at them! But people otherwise will say, well, they've seen an elephant before, but have they ever seen such a fluffy elephant? Look at him and his tusks. Oh my gosh. Oh, the choices we have to make, friends. Even my poor giraffes have not been spared. Behold, the fluffiness of our giraffes. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh, those ossicums are really fluffy now! Okay, actually, maybe I could see the appeal of making extremely fluffy ossicums, but still, you would hope that the animals would be amazing on their own, but we have to do what we have to do. And this is kind of a, a stunning, a stunning new insight into what one must accomplish in order to get people's attention. Look at our little baby giraffe here. Look at this ostrich! Look at the little, oh my gosh, even even our new little pigu friends, the Bar Barusi, oh no, even they have not been able to escape this fate. Look at the fluffy ostrich. I don't even 
even know what to think about this fluffy ostrich. <laughs> Oh my word. And what even are up with our zebras? Who even knows? They definitely look like some sort of creature out of a child's nightmare, if you ask me. But it apparently is delighting the guest. It's what they need. We have to, we, if, if people don't have the attention spans anymore to be able to focus long enough on reading something that takes more than 60 seconds, on listening to a speech that lasts more than, you know, five minutes, then we just have to meet people with where they are now. And instead of having just a proboscis monkey, we now have a gigantic nosed proboscis monkey. Did you see that? I thought the proboscis no like noses on these monkeys were already giant schnozzes, but now look at the size of them. They're huge! Look at that giant schnoz! Look at these monkeys! Oh my, oh my. Well, you know, friends, I, I guess that revenue and attention and people hanging out, oh, the little baby's hanging out with its mom. You can't even tell where one begins and the other ends because of all this fluff. But I suppose we're just going to have to, you know, change the things we do around here. For years now, I've been enjoying having our pixel biology adventures be long-winded. I don't do quick edits to try to respect the fact that those quick edits actually have been scientifically proven to destroy your attention span, especially if you are under the age of 24. Ah, you literally rewire your brain when you are watching something that quick and short and fast for such a long duration of time extremely terrifying if you ask me i like my brain the way it is i like to keep it i like to keep it healthy and fit but well sometimes if people are, are just not going to have the patience to sit through things you've got to meet them where they're at like i said our poor tapir they're even uh they're now sporting the extreme fluffitude too and if this is what we need to do well Maybe it is time to change things. Maybe I do need to start doing really fast edits and I need to start using loud noises, screaming and only showing you builds after they're 100% complete because who wants to sit through listening to the decision-making process? Nobody anymore. That's why nobody can make any good decisions. <sighs> oh well, I suppose we're gonna have to go ahead and spread this to the rest of our zoos. This is just the, the sign of the future. I might as well get started. And here we go! We're already having to fluffify the animals of Sahula Sand Safari! This is the new plan, friends! This is how we're going to go ahead and do our best to actually get people to pay attention for a few seconds to the, the, the animals of the world! Look at this little giraffe calf! Such fluffy legs! Such extremely fluffy ossicones! I thought their ossicones were fluffy enough as it is, but maybe now people will actually listen when I try to explain what an ossicone is! Oh, the fate of our animals! is dependent entirely on the fate of people paying attention to uh, the natural world though, so I suppose this is just the way it's going to have to go. Oh, look at that. Our, our Ellie's. Oh, look at our giraffes now. Well, at least hopefully this will be able to start catching people's attention. Oh, look at the little Ellie baby. Hang in there, little one. It's all for your own good, so hopefully people will, you know, actually stop and want to learn a little bit about how elephants live. And here are our lionesses after their makeover. I can just hear all of the snapping shutters of phones as people try to share this latest discovery on social media, so hopefully this will get people really excited about learning how female lions are the ones who actually rule the pride. And look at the little baby lion cub! Exceptionally fluffy! Extremely exceptionally fluffy! Exactly how it's going to be able to see, I have no idea. It almost looks like one of those little puppies that you have to go ahead and groom and you have to like clip the little fur out of the way. Is this going to be like when you have to add like tiny little clips on Yorkie dogs so that their hair is clipped up and out of their eyes? Oh, hang in there little tiny lion cub. Oh, how's the dad? Oh gosh. We finally, finally, oh there we go. We finally managed to finish doing the makeover of the mane. And to be honest, actually, it looks kind of good on him. I suppose that there are some animals <laughs> where the lion is going to feel extremely proud about his new mane now that it is actually huge. All right, good job, buddy. You're actually somebody who really might be able to pull off this look. I wasn't expecting that. Huh, he actually looks kind of cozy. 
And well, that's not the only zoological facility that we as pixel biologists take care of. We also are in charge of our Australian zoo, where now even our kangaroo are becoming exceptionally fluffified. Oh my word, I don't know how I think about them. Like, look at this, look at this. Our kangaroos are so fluffy now. I don't even know if, like, they can see where they're going. What if they just start colliding into each other in the midair? Oh, whatever it, whatever it takes to get everybody's attention, I suppose. Oh, so sad, so sad. Even our cassowaries have not been spared. Oh my goodness. Where's our extremely fluffy female? She is roaming, is she hiding? Is she hiding? She is, I, I think she's a little self-conscious. A little self-conscious about her new look. You still look like a glorious dinosaur, my girl. I promise. You still look like the glorious dinosaur that you are. I also just don't know if you can see anything either. Oh my gosh. And then we've also got... Is this a dust bunny, you might ask? A little dust bunny down here? No, friends. This is not a dust bunny. This is actually our koala. And he's so tiny. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've also got the koala parent who really, I can't really tell much of a difference. Koalas are kind of fluffy as it is and kind of snoozing the day away. Oh, but you can definitely tell a huge difference when it comes to our dingoes because the dingoes are beginning to go through and get fluffified as well. And they look extremely different. They look like they're more more ready to be like a husky crossbreed. <laughs> And possibly going to get way too overheated here in our Australian outback with all of that fluffy fur. Hang in there, little dingoes. And well, penguins may have already had the most feathers per square inch of any bird species, but now that they're actually going through the fluffification, look at how fluffy they are! Look at this adult penguin! Oh my gosh, his tail feathers! He's got so much going on on the tail feathers! And his beak! You suddenly have like a shoe bill bird beak. Oh my word. And not to mention the baby seal. I already thought they were cute and fluffy, but now he kind of looks like he's a blown up little helium balloon. Ah, the things we must do, friends. The things we must do to be able to capture the attention of the public so that they can really believe in the wonders of wildlife. I suppose we're just gonna have to carry on and change every single animal in every single one of our zoos into these fluffy monstrosities so that we can go with the cult of cute and hopefully manage to convince people to really learn more about the natural world and its wonders. Not that this looks very wonderful, <laughs> but all right guys, all right, all right, all right. Thank you guys very much for your patience while I hammed it up and had a little bit of fun for April Fool's Day. I was going to transform every single one of the animals into fluffiness, but in the end, I, I've decided we'll just stick with a few of them who are gonna be temporarily fluffified. Uh, they were the ones who didn't have any names. I didn't wanna change all of the ones who have names that you guys have already had like given to the animals based off of our previous videos. And just thank you guys. So yeah, don't worry guys, totally April Fools. Completely and totally April Fools. We already think that nature is amazing just as it is. We already know how to spread the wonders of the natural world. And no, I am not going to give in to the like attention corrupting clickbait culture. Do not fear friends. We're just gonna keep doing our pixel biology adventures the way we always have with a lot of love and excitement and occasionally something ridiculously silly like this. Also, I totally forgot how beautiful our Ice Ice Outpost Zoo is and I cannot wait to return to it. Holy moly. But yes, so in case you guys were curious how we fluffified all of the animals, what happens is there's a special cheat where if you change the animal's name to Meggy B, then it will actually temporarily become fluffy. The next time you load the game, it will not be fluffy, so it's not a permanent condition. Never fear for the welfare of our critters. Everything is fine. Uh, and actually, that was really fun to go through and see what was going on with all of the different animals and how they would look fluffified. I love the fact that Baby Koala does look like a little dust bunny from our Sims 4 streams. And then I actually thought that the lion, mm -hmm, his name's uh, Ovi, and I feel like Ovi was feeling pretty proud about himself having a big old mane like that. Oh, look at the little, 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 little penguins just all over the place. Oh, this is a really pretty zoo. I'm really proud of like what we've made. But yes, all right, guys, thank you so much for your patience while we went ahead and just had a little bit of fun for April Fool's Day. I really 
you know, I, I like I like just being a little bit playful now and then. And these guys look really cool. <laughs> Actually, looking at the size of this beak makes me really hope. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. Makes me really, really hope that we'll have a shoe bill bird added to Planet Zoo at some point in the future. But all right, the joke is over. We had our fun. I am relieved to look at how the animals look normally and very excited to go ahead and get back into several of the zoos we popped in that we haven't been in in a little while. I'm real pumped for that. But yeah, guys, so April Fool's Day. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Oh, look at this fluffy penguin go by. If you just need a little laugh or a smile, I highly recommend maybe picking out a Maggie B of a certain type of animal in your Planet Zoo adventures. And hey, speaking of Planet Zoo adventures, did you all know, and this is not an April Fool's Day joke, that just two days ago, we actually were chilling in Planet Zoo with over 20,000 people in our Twitch stream. That was an amazing, amazing opportunity and definitely bodes very well for the future of being able to play in Planet Zoo together live in our Twitch streams. So if you guys want to go over, you can find a link in the video description to our Twitch where you can go ahead and join us because I definitely plan on doing lots more streams. Look at all the penguins! <laughs> I definitely plan on doing a lot more streams where we can discover the wonders of the natural world together. We're starting to do a whole bunch of science experiments over on our streams as well, so you guys can jump in and join on that. We're going to be growing some crystals pretty soon. And in the future, we're going to be doing cool things like maybe raising some butterflies, doing some fossil excavation from a little fossil excavation kit, trying out other cool science kits, maybe starting a little bit of a garden together. It's going to be a good time, mixed in with all of our peaceful Wildberry Animal Crossing adventures, quite a few storytelling of fun adventures in The Sims 4, and of course, the occasional glorious adventure in Planet Zoo. So definitely pop over there if you would like to go ahead and join in because I really think, especially given the last month, we're going to be heading off on some big adventures live together. And with the world starting to open up again, there's a good chance that that might even be going to actual zoos. Oh, I would love to share those experiences with you. But all right, guys, we've had our fun. I'm going to defluffify all of our animals. Be sure to leave your comments if you would actually like to have one of these little ones named after you. And in this case, you would rename some of the fluffy guys. So if you want to help fix their fur, all you got to do is go ahead, or feathers in this case, all you got to do is leave a comment and the random comment generator might pick you next time. So all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has given you a little bit of a smile, a little bit of a laugh, and I will see you guys next time. Stay curious.